And the Grammy goes to Lizzo. Lizzo! If she's shining, everybody's gonna shine. But Lizzo's road to iconic status has been anything but easy. I just felt like, why am I doing this? Like, why? Like, I'm not supposed to be doing music. But she's always had a knack for turning haters into congratulators. It's not for me to really ingest. It's right. for them to express and for me to choose to listen to or not. Or not. That's a major reason that she's a force in the music world. Here's the true story about Lizzo. Lizzo tells people that she's not an overnight success. She's had to work hard for everything she's got. I didn't have this like, you know what I'm saying, this hit out the gate. Right. Like I've been working for a long time. Even though this musical powerhouse exudes confidence, joy, and beauty, she still struggles with negativity. She even had to leave Twitter for a while because of the trolls. We'll get to that a little later. First, let's start at the beginning. Lizzo was born with the name Melissa Vivian Jefferson during rush hour in Detroit. That might explain her ability to stop traffic wherever she goes. She burst into the world on April 27, 1988. She lived in Detroit Detroit for the first 10 years of her life. When she was a little girl, she had big dreams of being a writer or a scientist. While that may seem like a far cry from the woman she became, some would argue that she is a masterful writer coming up with the most legendary lyrics and music. And she's all about chemistry, combining different sounds and beats to create a unique style that is 100% Lizzo. After Detroit, Lizzo moved to Houston with her family. Her parents were busy building businesses, so she and her two older siblings were left to entertain themselves most of the time. Lizzo turned to music to keep herself occupied. <laughs> The way Lizzo puts it, when she was in sixth grade, the flute chose her. The band director at her school asked her if she would like to learn an instrument and the flute came into her life. When she was 14 years old, Lizzo formed a rap group with a couple of classmates. They called themselves the Corn Row Click. That's when Melissa got her nickname, Lizzo. As a member of the marching band and a rap group, she was a walking contradiction. Her music influences spanned a wide range from Jay-Z and Beyonce to Radiohead and Death Cab for Cutie. She could be seen wearing hippie clothes and Ugg boots, defining her sense of style for herself. When Lizzo was in high school, she described herself as a big girl with a cute face. Dating at that age was challenging for her. She said dudes liked her secretly, but they didn't like her publicly. She never had a boyfriend because of this. Lizzo claims that this is still sometimes the case in her adult life. She says that in the music industry, she's a big girl with a cute face and some cute music. And she still feels like she's being liked secretly and not claimed publicly. In 2005, Lizzo started college at the University of Houston. She spread herself too thin in college. At night, she was attending all the historically black sorority and frat parties. She performed at late night rap shows, but then she had to be up in the wee hours of the morning to get to her classical flute training. Eventually, it all became too much and she dropped out. Her parents in Denver and she no longer had a dorm to live in, so she had to sleep in her car. I was like sleeping in my car sometimes and this car was like a car my sister gave me that was like T-bone on Side. A banged up old Subaru was her home until she was able to join her first legit band. She got a gig playing the flute in a progressive rock band called The Ellipses. This allowed Lizzo to sleep on the floor at her band's rehearsal space. She would go to her friends' houses for dinner. Even though she was a vegetarian, she would eat the chicken juice covered rice. She shared in an interview that she was too broke to have morals at that time. But Lizzo and Ellipses had different ambitions. She wanted to grab the spotlight and be on MTV. The band wasn't interested in MTV. In 2010, the band broke up. That same year, Lizzo's father passed away. She sank into a dark depression. I had been doing all of this for my dad because my dad was sick and I wanted to help him and that's why I fought so hard. And I was like, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. Her mom pleaded with her to come home to stay with her in Denver. Lizzo moved to be with her mom during that difficult time. This was one of the lowest points of Lizzo's life. And I felt like now I really gotta just go hard. But she came out of it with a new gift to give to herself and to the rest of the world. That gift was body positivity. She told Teen Vogue that she feels it's unfortunate that the society we're all born in is one in which you have to hit your worst and even hate yourself in order to find love for yourself. She noticed how prevalent self-hatred is and decided to tip the scales in the other direction, from body negativity to body positivity. After almost a year, Lizzo packed her bags again and moved to Edina in Minneapolis. She got involved in the music scene while she was there. The Minneapolis music scene seemed to be perfect 
perfectly made for Lizzo. It was full of eclectic collaborations. One night, Lizzo could be opening for an electric dance music act. The next night, it could be a punk band. She also did backup vocals for a soul rock group. While in Minneapolis, Lizzo started two bands. The Chalice was the first band. They played catchy pop songs with rap. The Cut compared this band to the Spice Girls. After that, Lizzo and her bandmate Sophia Aris started the group Girl Party. Lizzo described it as full NWA. They caught the attention of Prince, who invited them to record a song called Boy Trouble. They got to play a show at Paisley Park under the conditions that they kept their lyrics clean and that they behaved themselves. Lizzo's rise has always been slow and steady, but Lizzo sees that as a good thing. She said when your career builds like that, nobody can take it away from you. One reason for this slow rise is because Lizzo believes that she was kept at bay in an industry that prioritizes traditional beauty norms. After Paisley Park, Lizzo made her first solo album, Lizzo Bangers. On that album, she got a lot off of her chest. After that, she collaborated with a lot of indie artists to create her second album, Big Girl, Small World. That album made Atlantic Records take notice. She signed with the label and moved to Los Angeles. Things got really exciting when she started opening for acts like Florence and the Machine, Haim, and Slater Kenny. Through it all, Lizzo never lost her passion for the flute. She takes her flute, which she calls Sasha Flute after Beyonce's Sasha Fierce, everywhere with her. She will sometimes practice her flute for four hours a day. She says it relaxes her. As for Lizzo's journey of body positivity, her love for herself has transformed her fashion sense. She said she went from having a style that says, mommy let me dress myself, to shockingly gorgeous. Her fashion game has changed the culture for women of all sizes. Lizzo said she feels like she's always dressed for her shape, but also makes sure she looks comfortable. It's all about pushing fashion boundaries and putting big girls on the map too. She wants all shapes and sizes to be visible and proud of who they are. It's no secret that Lizzo loves to show off her body and celebrate her curves on every stage she dominates. Lizzo has made a commitment when it comes to her hair as well. She told Allure that she always wears black hair. She believes it's important as a black woman to embrace her natural hair color because black women representing black things makes a bigger mark. She wants to be a bold representation of black women and she's definitely getting that job done. Social media is another platform in which Lizzo embraces her beauty. In Essence magazine, Lizzo shared that she loves creating shapes with her body, normalizing dimples and lumps, as well as stretch marks. She also shared that she loves her black elbows, calling them beautiful. Yeah. My butt was my least favorite thing about myself, uh -huh. and I learned to love it, and now it's the thing everybody can't stop talking about. So, her self-care didn't end with her fashion and beauty routines. In 2018, Lizzo started going to therapy. She told Rolling Stone that it was a difficult decision to start psychotherapy, but she wanted to learn how to be vulnerable with people in relationships and as a vocalist. All of this growth, self-love, and constant work on her talents made it possible for Lizzo to release her first full-length album in April 2019. Cause I Love You really put Lizzo in the mainstream with the help of Atlantic Records. In this album, Lizzo got personal, sharing a lot of her real-life experiences. She calls it a movie of her life, adding that it probably makes everybody wonder who Jerome really is. As for her slow rise to fame and success, Lizzo talks about this candidly. She said people will ask why they are just here about her. They claim to be late for the Lizzo train, to which she replies that yes, they are late, but it's not their fault. She claims they're late because she was put on the back shelf, but she's grateful for all the fans who worked hard to find her. That album earned her a Grammy for Best Urban Contemporary Album. She was the most nominated artist for the 62nd Grammys with eight nominations. In addition to her sparkling success at the Grammys, Lizzo dazzled fans during her 2019 Coachella performance. She also went across the globe to perform at the Glastonbury Festival. But even with all of her success and fame, Lizzo stays true to herself. Lizzo claims to be making her own movement, which is parallel to the body positive movement. She told Allure that when all the dust has settled on the groundbreakingness, she's still going to be doing what she loves. But that sparkling dust doesn't appear to be settling anytime soon. Even with Lizzo's career taking off, she still has to deal with some haters. It got so bad that Lizzo had to quit Twitter in January 2020. She posted one last comment saying she can't do Twitter anymore because there are too many trolls. She wrote that she'll be back when she feels like it. Overall, Lizzo lets it roll off. She told Gail King that she likes to stay in her own positive bubble, but sometimes that's difficult when she sees a lot of negativity on the internet towards everyone, not just her. I have to look at all of those things that I'm shaming and I have to find love 
in those things. But she offered a piece of advice to her followers. Uh -huh. Don't ever let anybody take or steal your joy, especially not the internet. What's your favorite Lizzo song? Tell us in the comments. Is there any part of Lizzo's story to success that shocked you? Let us know. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Taco for more. Bye for now.